Before we begin, uh, please allow me to draw your attention to the cautionary statements at the beginning of this presentation and to the risk factors at the end of this slide deck. So allow me to introduce you to Cybin. We are a biotech company on a mission to revolutionize mental health care. We are focused on progressing psychedelic therapeutics by utilizing proprietary drug discovery platforms, innovative drug delivery systems, novel formulation approaches, and treatment regimens for psychiatric disorders. At Cybin, we're advancing a portfolio of proprietary next generation psychedelic therapeutics. And we're doing that through the building of a portfolio of proprietary deuterated tryptamines designed to be shorter acting, more scalable, and more accessible to patients. I believe we also have the only scientific team to have ever successfully developed a commercial psychedelic drug to date. Over the last 12 months, we have been building out our IP portfolio, covering novel psychedelic molecules, delivery platforms, and supported treatment regimens, leading to the creation of a drug discovery pipeline of modified and novel tryptamines and phenethylamines, a library of over 50 molecules at this point. Our lead formulation of a sublingual film version of psilocybin, CYB001, is poised to begin a phase 2A study in major depressive disorder. And later this year, we fully expect to file an investigational new drug application for CYB003, a novel short-acting deuterated tryptamine for the treatment of resistant psychiatric disorders. We've been able to do this and make this progress off over the last 12 months, thanks to the support of our strategic shareholder base. In the last two financing rounds, we were fortunate enough to have 95% of those investors come from the US blue chip biotech investment sector. Uh, we are listed on the NEO exchange in Canada. On March 8th, we uplisted to the OTCQB venture market in the US. And at this point, we are MJDS eligible for a US listing on a tier one exchange. There's no question that an enormous opportunity is in front of us to change how we treat mental health disorders. Over 700 million people globally are affected with some form of mental illness, addiction, or eating disorder. Collectively, through indirect and economic co uh, direct economic costs, more than $2.5 trillion is spent annually on treating and dealing with the problems associated with mental disorders. And yet the treatments that we have available today to treat conditions like depression, such as SSRIs, have been shown in meta-analyses to really be no more, no better than placebo for treating moderate depression. But that's changing. Thanks to amazing positive psilocybin research out of Johns Hopkins that we've seen in major depressive disorder. This is a study that was published in November of 2020 in JAMA Psychiatry. And unlike current treatments, the effect sizes here are really quite enormous, with 71% of patients after just two treatments of psilocybin having a clinically significant response to their treatment at week four. And 54% of patients meeting the criteria for remission of depression. As the author says here, these results, these effect sizes, are more than four times greater than the effect sizes found with standard psychopharmacological depression treatments and in, in certain studies. So tr clearly we have an opportunity uh, to really transform uh, how we treat depression and addiction and other related disorders. And of course, these results give us great confidence in our psilocybin program that we're progressing for MDD. There are both opportunities and challenges here. So clearly there are promising recent studies supporting the efficacy of psychedelic molecules for depression, for addiction, for PTSD and other conditions. These molecules are well characterized. They're well understood. We understand the chemistry and we understand the metabolism. 
and we're seeing, as in that study from uh, Johns Hopkins, large potential effect sizes, which reduce development risk. However, the current treatments that, or current molecules that are out there all come with their own challenges, and current psychedelic treatments that are in development require extensive therapy support and have very long treatment durations. The problem with those long treatment durations is that makes scaling these treatments very difficult. So significant work still remains to be done to create FDA approved drugs that have a rapid onset of action, very controlled delivery, shorter duration of action, and a reduced dependence on healthcare system resources and therapists, for example. And that's our goal at Cybernet, and we're aiming to develop treatments that are more scalable and much more broadly accessible by patients in need. And we have the team to do that, a leadership team that has deep experience in healthcare, M&A, and capital markets, and a scientific team that has facilitated billions in pharmaceutical sales. This team has, over the years, published 300 combined peer-reviewed publications and has overseen more than 60 IND programs with the FDA. So clearly we have the resources and the talent to make our programs successful. So what are we focused on? Our research and development priorities at Cybin are focused around creating second generation psychedelic molecules that are designed to be more scalable and accessible. And we're doing this by taking well-known parent scaffold molecules, including psilocybin, DMT, MDMA, and improving their bioavailability. We're optimizing their pharmacokinetic profiles to provide shorter durations of action and, and also uh, the potential for reduced side effects. We're combining that with inhalation delivery to provide a rapid onset of action and improve dose control. And that combination of medicinal chemistry and drug delivery enables us to control both the dose intensity and the dose duration. We're also combining uh, this chemistry, this delivery with digital tools that are designed to support the patient, support their therapy program and reduce the dependence on therapists and healthcare systems, thereby reducing overall costs and improving our ability to scale and provide broad access to these treatments. And our research and development really has three pillars, chemistry, delivery, and technology. On the chemistry side, we're taking very short acting tryptamines, tryptamines that may last just 15 or 20 minutes in their parent form. We're taking those scaffolds and we're applying due duration technology. And what I mean by that is we're, we have an ability to substitute individual hydrogen atoms on those molecules with deuterium. That has the impact of increasing the molecular weight of the molecules. It also slows the breakdown of these tryptamines in the body. It slows oxidation, it slows demethylation, and therefore provides a longer, uh, longer half-life of these very short-acting tryptamines that we can design through selective deuteration to be longer or shorter. When we combine uh, the deuteration chemistry with delivery, and in this case, but we are, we are using sublingual delivery and we're using inhalation delivery, we're then able to provide a very rapid onset of action. We believe that our inhalation platform should deliver an onset close to IV in speed. And we also have tremendous control, as I said, to dial up and dial down both the intensity and the duration of these treatments, and then combined with technology to help support the patient and healthcare systems. Our clinical pipeline is diverse. Our lead clinical program is a sublingual film formulation of psilocybin, CYB001, that we are developing for major depressive disorder. Behind that, we have a deuterated tryptamine, CYB003, which is an inhalation, uh, combined with inhalation technology, that we expect to file an IND for in 2021 and entering the phase one clinical studies this year for treatment resistant psychiatric disorders. And then CYB004, another deuterated tryptamine 
We plan to enter the clinic in 2022 along with our phenethylamine program. Let me take a minute to talk to you about our, our sublingual film formulation, CYB001, poised to enter phase 2A imminently. This sublingual formulation we're studying in patients with major depressive disorder, and our phase 2 program is in two parts, phase 2A and phase 2B. Phase 2A is a randomized parallel group open label study designed to uh, determine the appropriate equivalent dose of our sublingual film compared with a 25 milligram oral capsule. Here we are studying one, three, five, and seven milligrams of our sublingual film with a 25 milligram oral capsule in 40 patients with major depressive disorder. Primary endpoints here will be to determine the PK curve, the onset of action, the, the, uh, the, the appropriate equivalent dose and the duration of action, and secondary endpoints will include safety and efficacy. Once we have selected the appropriate dose from the phase 2A, we will then move into a phase 2B clinical study, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled safety and efficacy study in 120 patients with major depressive disorder. 80 of those will receive the active film and 40 will receive placebo. Our primary efficacy endpoint in this phase 2b will be a reduction in the madras scale the montgomery asberg scale for depression at 30 days and the entire and, and the entire program will take about 12 months to complete enrollment with data coming uh, some months after that we've also formed a technology partnership with kernel utilizing functional near infrared spectroscopy a portable neuroimaging device that will enable us to study neural activity before, during, and after psychedelic therapies. That'll help us quantify and learn much more about what is going on in the brain during the therapy and perhaps to see if that neuroplasticity that is seen under fMRI uh, is retained after, after treatment. So what does 2021 look like? Over the rest of this year, we expect to begin our phase two study of CYB001 in patients with major depressive disorder. We expect to progress our novel deuterated tryptamine program, primarily with CYB003 entering into a phase one clinical study by the end of this year. We expect to expand our data and understanding collective quantitative data using groundbreaking neuroimaging technology. We're in the process of developing a digital support platform that's designed to support the patient and reduce healthcare system resource needs, aiding scalability and reimbursement. We plan to continue filing and expanding our IP portfolio covering novel molecules and delivery mechanisms and technology platforms. And we can plan to continue our uh, path for around M&A and partnering and as I mentioned, we're MJDS eligible for a US tier one listing over the next several months. In summary, at Cybin, we have an experienced management team with a proven track record in both healthcare and psychedelics. We have 10 patent filings today and growing and a discovery pipeline of, near, of more than 50 molecules at this stage. Our lead program, CYB001, is ready to enter phase two. And we have a deep preclinical pipeline of both tryptamines and phenethylamines for a wide range of indications. We have a strong strategic investor base and access to capital, and we're well capitalized to continue and complete our programs throughout the course of this very busy 2021. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for attending and for your interest in Simon. Thank you.